in the last video we have uh, computed the uh, uh, embedded length of uh, cantilever sheet pile in cohesive soil for the initial strength condition as i have discussed in the starting of the video that cantilever sheet pile design in cohesive soil there are usually two considerations we have to uh, determine the embedded length of cantilever sheet pile for initial strength condition and both final strength condition uh, this is the only change between the uh, in between the design of sheet pile in granular soil and cohesive soil uh, that is because uh, design of sheet pile in cohesive soil is a bit more complicated because the strength of clay changes with time whereas strength of sand doesn't change it is more or less fixed for the clay it changes with time and accordingly the lateral earth pressure also changes with time this change is basically because of the change in strength parameters which is cohesion c and angle of internal friction phi the depth of penetration and the size of piling must satisfy both the initial strength condition and final strength condition because in, in uh, because for the initial condition the long term effect of the uh, drainage of uh, drainage, con drainage condition of soil is not considered so the strength of clay immediately comes from the cohesion and in that case for the initial strength condition no angle of internal friction is considered which we have done in the mat for the initial condition as you can see uh, for the second layer uh, c2 is equals to 800 psf no angle of internal friction is considered but immediately after sheet piling is installed uh, with the time goes on the clay derives all of its strength from cohesion and no strength from internal friction initially and after times after time passes uh, usually the cohesion value is uh, taken as zero and for uh, since the drainage occurs so the angle of internal friction phi prevails in the final strength condition that is why in the final strength condition we will take c equals to 0 and phi equals to uh, phi can be assumed less than 30 degree you can take any value in less than 30 degree so let's take it as Mm, say 24 degree <sighs> so just like before we will solve the math We will determine P1, P2, P3 just like before. Since uh, this is a very um, important and this is very interesting as well because as you can see for the granular uh, as you can uh, remember for the granular soil how did we determine the value of cantilever uh, embedded length of uh, cantilever sheet pile. So if you can remember that this is just like same. Why? because in the granular soil there were two stratification of soil layer first layer was granular and second layer was also granular you can see in this math the first layer was initially granular and the second layer after the drainage 
drainage occurs in the final strength condition c equals to 0 and so there develops a phi angle of internal friction so the second layer is also will act like granular soil which was initially a cohesive soil because uh, there was only cohesion c equals to 800 psf and no angle of internal friction was considered but for final strength condition there will be only angle of internal friction as a strength parameters So this, this is our math, we will be solving this math for final strength condition as I have discussed. In final strength condition for the drainage, uh, in long term the drainage condition appears and cohesion C becomes 0 and there develops angle of internal friction phi so if you look at the math the first layer of the soil is granular because c equals to 0 phi equals to 27 degree and second layer is also granular soil in the video of 1 and 2 we have solved the problem for granular soil so this is nothing new this will be solved again in the same way what is important in the math is for the initial strength condition the layer this layer the second layer was cohesive soil and for final strength condition the drainage occurs so the cohesion disappears uh, day to day uh, and there only develops the angle of internal friction phi and this is also with the theory I have discussed in the initially okay so the problem is similar we will have to draw the art pressure diagram just like before so from the phi uh, we will determine the value of active art pressure coefficient and eventually passive art pressure coefficient i'm not going to the details because the same is the same math is solved in video one and two so if we draw the art pressure diagram it will be somewhat similar similar like that so just like before we will increase the area up to this to determine easily again we are solving the problem in conventional method so now what we will have to do we will have to determine the value p1 p2 p3 <coughs> p4 and p5 so P1 will be 110 into 3 into Ka 0.38 is equals to 125.4. Okay. Yes. Now let's determine P2. P2 will be 110 into 3 plus 110 minus 62.5 into 10. 0 0.38 305.9PSF PSF same way P3 110 into 3 plus 10 minus 62.5 into 10 into 0 0.42 338.1PSF okay now again we will determine the value of h let's write this h let's take this as the embedment length as d 
take this as small d this as f okay okay now from similar triangle equation we will solve this three three eight one one plus four point four two into h into hundred fifteen minus sixty two point five will be equals to two point three seven which is the passive earth pressure coefficient into h into 115 minus 62.5 this is the point where active earth pressure is equals to passive earth pressure h equal be equals to 3.3 feet so now we will determine the value of p4 okay this is p4 so uh, we can take this triangle and this triangle so p4 will be okay, let's take it down so p4 by d will be 338.1 by 3.3 so p4 will be equals to 102.45 d okay let's go back to determining p5 P five will be equals to hundred into three plus hundred ten minus sixty two point five into ten plus hundred fifteen minus sixty two point five into three point three plus D into two point three seven minus zero point four two into hundred fifteen minus sixty two point five into 3.3 plus d okay so what's p5 actually p5 to determine the point p5 which is um sorry. this is p5 okay now so p5 is the total passive resistance of this point minus active resistance from this side so this is what we have written in the equation passive resistance minus active resistance so the value of p5 becomes this now in the same way we will determine the horizontal forces corresponding to pressure diagram and we will take the summation of h equals to zero and moment about point o will be equals to zero so in the same way we will be determining let's go back to the problem H1, H2, H3, <clears throat> H4, 
page four to page five and page six okay eight six is corresponding to this hole okay mm -hmm. H1 will be equals to 188.1, H2 will be 1254, H3 and H4557.87, H5 and two. D into one zero two point four five D five one point two three D square and eight six will be half into F one zero two point four five D plus two two four five point seven plus one zero two point four D six will be hundred two two eight five F plus one two point four three df so we will be determining the corresponding lever arm m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 and m6 this is just like before that is why i'm not going to the details again because in the details i have shown you in the video 1 2 3 and 4 Okay, and in the same way we will be putting the equation for solving D and F. So H1 plus H2 plus H3 <coughs> plus H4 minus H5 plus H6 equals to 0. So this becomes something just like this equation. So let's put it as equation 1. Now we will be taking moment about point O. We will be taking moment of point O for horizontal forces h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and a6 okay this leads to a uh, equation d equals to 17.3 feet okay now from equation 1 and equation 2 from moment about point O we will get equation 2 and we have already found equation 1 so in equation 2 we will be putting the values of F and we will get a big equation of d to the power 5 and we will be solving this in the calculator and after solving we will get the value of d 17.3 feet so now we will have to compare uh, the values of d for initial strain condition and final strain condition and whichever is critical that means which whichever is larger in between initial strength and final strength this will be for the critical strain condition and we will be designing for this condition Okay, so for final strain condition, initial strain condition, we got the value of small d, 5.56 feet, and for final strain condition, we got 17.3 feet. So final strain condition is the critical condition. So the total embedded length of the sheet pile will be 17.3 plus h, h was 3.3, which is 20.6 feet. We will be adding 20 to 40 percent and we will get the 
value of total embedded length 1.2 into 20.6 which turns to 24.75 feet which can be rounded up to 25 feet so this is up to the embedded length of the sheet pile so if i ask you the total height of sheet pile which will be 25 feet plus 10 feet plus 3 feet which turns 38 feet okay this is it thank you